yeah moving forward let's uh, look at a couple of uh, small numericals uh, on the break even uh, point and uh, some kind of interpretations which you can make with respect to decision making all right so let's go through the first uh, numerical so that we can uh, understand the, the concept of break even point in a slightly better manner so woodrock industries the fixed operating cost is 50000 per month so it, each table requires a material that costs 400 one hour to make business pay to face the table makers 800 an hour so what are the fixed costs here the fixed cost is The fixed cost is 50,000. There are two variable costs here. Right? Just go through it. There is a 400 per table. So, I will treat it as variable cost. 400 is for the material and 800 per hour and the table takes one hour. So, at the end it is 800 per table. So, there is a 1,200 bucks per table which is the variable cost okay the table makers are all on a contract such that if they don't work for any reason they are not paid the tables are sold to a wholesaler for 1500 each so the selling price per table is 1500 bucks so what how do i compute the break even point here so I am either I can use the formula directly which is the fixed cost by per unit variable cost uh, sales minus the variable cost or per unit contribution. So my, my sales per unit is 1500, my variable cost per unit is 1200 and fixed cost come out to 50,000 bucks. So which is operating to 50,000 by 300. So, at least this is telling me that uh, they, I, there should be a minimum of 167 tables that need to be sold during uh, this particular month for the company to break even. Right? So, very straight. Or probably you could have used, assuming the X number of tables, uh, the same logic. Assuming X number of tables are sold, the total revenue is 1500X. The, the cost wise, there is a fixed cost of 50,000. And also there is per table cost, which is 1200. So depending on X number of tables which you have sold, it works out to that. So 300X equal to 50,000 from where X boils down again to the same calculation which we have done. So either way whatever is the mechanism you are using to compute the break even point it uh, it it actually gives me a kind of a conclusion or an interpretation that i need to produce and sell at least 167 tables during this period in order to break even so at least uh, uh, to generate the minimum or not to generate the loss if i have to be then I should be producing around 167 tables. All right. Now, how does it uh, help me in the further analysis? Now, you look at the second part of the of the case. The same company expects to sell 500 tables a month. Oh, no issues at all because we are talking about the break-even point is only 167 tables. So, if the company is expecting to sell 1500 tables, it is well off. Okay. The business has the opportunity to rent a table making machine. Doing so would increase the total fixed cost of operating the workshop for a month to 300,000. Okay, the fixed cost from 50,000, they are going to increase to 300,000. Using the machine would reduce the labor time to half an hour per table, which means uh, they only need to pay 400 bucks per table because uh, half an hour, 
because uh, they are saying the table makers would still be paid 800 an hour so 400 per half an hour 400 per table so the table cost per unit table cost will come out to 400 so now if i try to compute the revised break even what is this 300000 is the fixed cost the sales is still 1500 minus the unit contribution this time 400 is the material cost and 400 is the labor cost per table. So it is working out to 300,000 divided by 700. But yeah, this is uh, working out to almost uh, 400 plus, right? 420 plus. So, which means this is telling me that the, temp the, the company should manufacture at least 420 tables in order to break even. Of course, they are planning to sell 500 tables, no issues. But what is happening here, the break even point is very high, one point. Two, the margin of safety, the amount above the break-even point which the company is targeting is much lesser in the second case compared to the first case. So the company is actually getting into a slightly risky position by accepting this move because in case it's not able to sell 500, in case its number of sales are falling down from 500 to 400, it is going ahead into a loss making kind of a situation so it has to really assess the downside but what is the upside so you if you look at uh, uh, now let's try to so break even wise we have computed we found that when 167 is the break even point if i am not renting it we have uh, 420 plus is the break even point if I have rented that machine. So one thing is uh, it is increasing my risk because there is a the, the minimum quantity which needs to be produced now has gone up drastically. Okay, but let's look at the profits assuming that the company has made uh, 500 uh, tables. In the first case, what was the revenue? 1500 into 500 is their revenue okay so 75 or 7 lakh 50 thousand is their revenue then variable costs will come out to 60 thousand because we are uh, 6 lakhs 1200 into 500 so 6 lakhs or 600 thousand is the variable cost and they have a fixed cost of 50 thousand so overall their profitability is close to 1 lakh right whereas in the new model again their their revenues are not changing 7 lakh 50 thousand now the variable cost is only 800 per table so 800 into 500 tables which is working out to 4 lakhs and uh, 3 lakhs being uh, the fixed cost so overall they are getting 50,000 as the profit so at least in this case if you are looking at it uh, from 500 unit standpoint the profitability is high in the first case compared to the second so this is how you typically uh, make a note of computing your profitability even the break even point has gone up in the second case so the, the only advantage that may come up is probably the more the number of units you are selling not 500 7 800 kind of numbers what could very well happen is the extra profit which you are making is working out to 700 per table because your variable cost is only 800 so the extra profit which you are uh, making by selling one additional table is around uh, 500, 700 per uh, table whereas in the first case it's only 300 per table. So the higher the volume that comes up probably uh, you may be better off with the second model using the table making uh, machine because the machine should help you in making more tables, sell more tables 
so that way it, it, it there should be some kind of a difference so the volumes have to increase to make you more and more profitable because there should be some kind of a compensation for the additional fixed cost that you have incurred right so this is the way you take your business decisions using the break even point analysis all right let's move further but there are a few limitations that are associated with the break-even point analysis. Some things like, see, if there are some kind of non-linear relationships, because the break-even point always shows something like a line, total revenues line, total cost line, where they are intersecting, that is what is the break-even point. But most of the times what you find is, for between different uh, variables, there is a possibility of a non-linear relationship existing. What do I mean by non-linear relationship? There could be a lot of economies or diseconomies of scale with respect to labor or raw materials or whatever. What is it? See, the more I buy, I could get more discount. Right? Or uh, probably uh, if I am employing more and more labor, some labor may come out uh, at a cheaper rate for me, but uh, if I want more people, I may have to pay more per labor. So I don't know, there could be, there may not be a linear relationship uh, always like, okay, if I have uh, 10 workers, 50 per worker, 500 is my total cost. It may so happen that the first 10 workers I may get for 50, but from the 11th to 20th workers, I may have to spend around 100 bucks. So, the break-even relationship, the model may not work effectively, especially if there are non-linear relationships with respect to costs or even for the prices. If I am trying to sell, I can't sell every item at, uh, let's say, 1000 bucks. Probably 10 items, 20 items, 50 items I can sell at 1000 bucks. But anything more if I have to sell, I may have to give some kind of a discount schemes or uh, some kind of reductions in the prices. Only then there could be some level of uh, some level of uh, uh, benefit that I or some level of volume increase that I can do. So which means not all sales can be done at the same price. This is also an example of non-linear relationship. And as we have discussed earlier in this uh, chapter, also there could be a possibility of stepped-up fixed cost. As we are simply uh, saying, initially up to selling 100 units, probably the current uh, premises or current office location or factory location is sufficient for me. But if I have, if the demand suddenly grows up and I have to sell 200 units, I have to increase my capacity, which means there is an increase in the investment in the fixed costs. So in that case, the direct break-even analysis may or may not be applicable. A detailed analysis is required for me. And uh, even if the company is operating into multi-product businesses, which is the case today with almost every company, because whenever we talk about uh, sales variable cost, that entire analysis will be much perfectly applied if there is uh, only one single product line. But if there are multiple products, Segregating all these things would be a painful exercise. Segregating all uh, all the costs and assigning all the costs to different products is a very massive exercise. So though the concept of break-even uh, analysis is uh, still applicable, but how well I can segregate the costs and everything product-wise is a big challenge. Right, but as a simple nutshell in this uh, in this uh, chapter, the expectation is you should be comfortable with these uh, analysis. Like, how does the cost and the volume affect my profitability? How many units should be produced and sold in a particular period so that the business becomes profitable in that particular period? Right. I hope uh, the, this gave you a very basic uh, insight into the world of uh, cost volume profit analysis, including the break-even analysis. If you have any further uh, queries, we can discuss it now. Else, uh, even at a later point, you should be uh, able to give me uh, a call or sending a, send me an email at the number or the email address that is specified below.
we'll be again uh, back uh, with uh, the next uh, the next chapter which will deal with the various types of caustics all right <laughs>